we all understand the type of climate that we're dealing with. We're dealing with multiple offer situations. You know, I'd love to know sort of what's your why? What what, what makes you tick? Why are you so successful? Uh, in and your- have a dialogue with your lawyer. Have a dialogue with your agent. Both sort of passionate about sort of what we do. Again, vet your agent to make sure that they're experienced have- and they're local. I like that idea. No excuse to miss it on no Saturdays excuse. from 8 to 9. <laughs> That's right. WBZ. And now the show that gives you the latest and most relevant housing market news. Real Estate Radio Boston with financial expert Rick Shearer and legal professional Ali Alavi. There isn't a week that goes by that that I don't get a call about Airbnb. Now, a lot of the questions that I end up getting, we end up getting is that, uh, can I, as a potential buyer of a condo, use my property uh, for Airbnb purposes? Uh, and, and and I want to open that uh, open the discussion up there, and then sort of shift over to to existing home, uh, uh, condo owners. It's a problem. You get calls at least once a week. I would say that we get more than once a week. Oh, I'm sure, absolutely. We get boards calling us and complaining about it. We actually get calls from unit owners of associations that we represent who know that we represent them and say, "Can't you do something about this?" For the unit owner who purchased a condominium for a sense of privacy, security. All the amenities that go with Well, before we get into an already existing uh, unit owner, let's talk about someone who's actually thinking about purchasing a condo. And as part of their justification in purchasing this condo, they want to be able to utilize a room or two rooms for Airbnb purposes. What would you say under those circumstances? To the potential purchaser? Exactly. Read your documents. Read Read the docs. Read your condo docs because... The vast majority of condominium documents do not allow transient use. Exactly. And, and transient use, what are we what are we talking about? What's the definition of that? Well, first of all, the you can't rent out your apartment for let's say less than a fixed period with a fixed lease. Right. Six months, a year, et cetera, and so forth. Some associations even have a flat out no rental policy mm-hmm. at all and they're hundred percent owner occupied. So you should check your documents. And that's anybody who's heard this program has heard us say that over and over again. Absolutely. Read your documents. If you're doing the conveyancing, Ali, I know you read the documents mm-hmm. to advise them. So it, it's so important. It's the basic step number one. Now let's yeah. say this. Let's, well, can, can I yeah, interrupt yeah, yeah. you for Please, one Henry, minute? Yes. Because I think that from the prospective purchaser's point of view, what they're looking at are ever increasing costs of purchasing condominiums. For example, in downtown Boston, sure, it's tough to find condominiums that aren't getting up over seven hundred and fifty thousand to a million dollars or more. Mm-hmm. And when one looks at the mortgage cost, um, there are a lot of people who say, "Look, I just can't afford this." Right. And I can't afford to live in the city of Boston unless I can generate some sort of income. And how wonderful it would be to rent out that extra bedroom or whatever to someone else from time to time because it's it's almost like a hotel room. They come and they go. Right. You don't. You're not going to live with them for a long time, but you're going to get some extra cash, and that cash could be um, enough to really offset your mortgage. So that's what people are looking at. That's what people are doing. But there's tremendous resistance from the point of view of condo associations because of the wear and tear, the noise, the lack of responsibility of and people who move in. And, and the security. And the security is Absolutely. huge. Yeah. yeah. Um, you guys have some new programs that you're coming out with. You've obviously got this joint venture program that's been very successful. And, and again, it's you just, you're taking people under your wing. You're finding them the deals. You're working with them through the process. And at the end of the day, you share in the profits of the, the sale of that property. But you get on ground, you know, boots on the ground um, education. Um, you guys are, are looking to go a little bit wider with it and, uh, and starting a group co- coaching. Yeah. Uh, a little bit more affordable for people that are just starting out, you know, just learn with your peers and and uh, and go for Tell us a little bit about the joint coaching program. Sure, absolutely. Like you had mentioned, uh, we launched the Fast Track Joint Venture Program in which we allowed potential investors to come in, partner with a senior project manager. We actually sourced, sourced them the first deal. Um, they worked hand in hand throughout the entire renovation of the project and they shared in the profits at the end. The group coaching program is uh, an opportunity for investors who may not want or may not have the ability to kind of um, partner with that type of program, but have their own rehab going or uh, struggling with finding contractors, struggling with finding financing. Uh, this will be a six month program that will allow um, these investors to come together and get mentoring and coaching from our partners uh, within the within the uh, organization, and we'll walk them step by step through where their struggles are. We'll have you know candid open forum roundtable discussions on 
scheduling and permitting and um, finding contractors and vetting contractors and uh, how to set up financing, how to evaluate your project. So when you when you see an opportunity, how do I know what it's going to resell for on the back end and teaching them how to really work backwards. Right. And I think that's where we found most that's of our all, success. It's pretty amazing. I mean, so, so essentially this program is geared towards individuals that saw the fix and flip programs on TV, thought it was too easy, got themselves involved in projects. They're, in, they're, they're teetering now. They don't know. Obviously, they've, they've faced some uh, major failures. And now you've essentially designed a program that says, okay, you can still do this, but these are, these are the areas that you're making mistakes yep. in. And, you know, we've got a formula that works. You know, we know yeah. how to take, you know, from a project from A to is he and, and and so success location i mean is you can't beat it i mean you're you know you're literally right there on the on the highway right into boston that's right what, i mean what does it take no traffic what's it take from andover to the center of boston so if it was a non-commuting time it could be 20 to 30 minutes it's huh. a straight shot it's 25 miles right right um, we've also have two commuter rail stops so it's very easy if you want to work on your laptop or listen yeah. to music on your way in. It's it's just another easy way to get in. Now, what are you seeing in, in the Andover market right now for inventory? I mean, we talk on this show all the time and we're beating the drum. Put your house on the market. We have people to buy them. Um, what are you – what's the what's what's going on in your little piece of the world? So we always measure our market based on the months of available inventory. Mm -hmm. So you know, clients will hear me talk about absorption rate. Right. So with six months being balanced inventory, meaning equal amounts of buyers and sellers. It's a nice flow. Right. Right now we have just around two months worth of inventory. <laughs> wow. So we've got less than two thirds. We Or let's just put it the other way. We have a third of what we need. Right. Um, Obviously, so, high demand. High demand, uh, and and Andover has a year-round market. So oftentimes, sellers will say to me, "What's the best time to put my house on the market today?" And well, no, <laughs> no, no, no. I take the same kind of approach you do. I'll say, "Well, what's your plan? What's your goal?" Right. Because I can make it happen any month of the year. So mm -hmm. it really depends on what their goals and needs are. But I am a huge believer in the early spring market. And, you know, you may ask me, when is the early spring market? I was and just going to ask you that, but that's yeah. okay. <laughs> I, won't, I won't play interviewer as well. But, but that's where I use the word now. The yeah. spring market, the early spring market has started. Mm -hmm. We have done open houses over the last three weekends in January. And we'll consistently have anywhere between 20 and 40 groups wow. come through. And, I mean, and, and. People, people are out looking and people are out buying. Gretchen, how do you how do you address your client's concern about the fact that your property may not showcase well, especially this weekend that we're having the snowstorm in the midst of it and people are trying to plot, you know, shovel themselves out, so on and so forth. Do you think that that has an impact? Is there is there legitimacy in that argument in terms of sort of holding off until at least listing a property later? Uh, not necessarily. Because, uh, again, the, the buyers are out there. Oftentimes, we, we, have, we hire a professional photographer for our listings. Mm -hmm. So you have a great inside story to tell. We have access to aerial exterior photography, which typically is not winter related. Mm -hmm. And most people today with the advent of, you know, camera phones, et cetera, right. quickly, I mean, have, have many outdoor pictures typically. And so we'll supplement that. So we'll show a winter scene, but then also show the beautiful gardens or landscaping or other things. That's that brilliant they have. because I don't think very many buyers have a good imagination. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, they don't. Nice. I'll yeah. tell you, I remember when we were looking for property, my wife's like, ah, I don't like it. I'm like, no, but look at